Hello friends, welcome to G-Centric. So today in this lecture we will study about the mesh analysis. So in the previous lecture we have completed the nodal analysis and we have seen the procedure of uh, identifying the nodes solving the equations on the nodal analysis. Okay, so coming to this mesh analysis in the gate it is not asked. Okay, so it is a lengthy procedure. Basically it is asked in the engineering uh, uh, semester uh, exams. Okay, so in gate exams mainly they will test the knowledge and its applications. So, this mesh analysis is a very lengthy solving technique. Okay, so, most of the time they will not ask. So, coming to this word mesh, what does it mean? So, there is a confusion between the word mesh and loop. So, this mesh is nothing but the smallest loop in the circuit. Whereas, this loop can be, uh, it can have many loops in it or it can have multiple loops or it can be a single loop. But the smallest loop in the whole of the circuit is called as mesh. So, we will understand it with an example of circuit diagram. If there is a voltage source and a resistor and here there is one more resistor, let this voltage be V and this is some R1, R2. Okay, so, this is one more resistor and some load is connected R3 and R4. So, in this circuit okay, or you can even take one more voltage source here. Okay. So, let us take one more voltage source V2. Okay. So, this is V1 and that is V2 and we have got three resistors. Now, loop how many loops are there? So, let us denote this loop by L. Okay. So, here is this is one loop. So, this is one loop in this direction. So, this is one more loop. This is first loop this is second loop and there is one big loop. This is the loop number 3. Okay? So, this is the loop. This big loop has got two small loops in it. Now, what is mesh then? It is nothing but mesh is nothing but only the smallest loop which does not consist any other loop in it. Okay? So, this third node has got two loops in it. So, it cannot be a mesh. So, in this circuit diagram there are only two mesh. This is one mesh and this is the second mesh. Okay? So, the definition of the mesh is nothing but the smallest loop which should not have any other loop present in that mesh. Okay? So, this is the uh, meaning of the mesh analysis. Now, there is one important thing. This is applicable only to the planar network. So, it is applicable only for the planar network. But as in nodal analysis, we have seen that it is applicable for planar as well as non-planar. That is because if it is a non-planar, if it the mesh is in the three dimensional, then we cannot see the other side of this circuit okay? and we cannot identify how many loops or meshes are there in that circuit diagram. So, this is only applicable for the planar network. Now, there is one more formula. So, that formula is number of independent number of independent loops which is denoted by L will be equal to B minus N plus 1. Okay? So, where this B is nothing but number of branches and N is nothing but number of nodes. And what do we mean by this independent loop? It is nothing but this branch one by any one of the branch in the mesh must not be connected to the another mesh that is we will call it as independent loop or the one from the the branch that is present in one loop should not be connected to the loop of the another loop ok. So, this is independent this is independent so this will become independent loops. So, to calculate that we have to take uh, using this formula we can calculate that how many branches are there? This is 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 branches. So, L is equal to 5 minus. So, number of nodes is 1, 2 and 3 and plus 1. Okay, 5 minus 3 is 2. 2 plus 1. Sorry, how many nodes? Yeah, this is we have to include also the reference nodes. So, there are 4. 5 minus 4 is 1. 1 plus 1 is so 2. So, how many? First, what we had seen there are Number of loops is 3, but number of meshes were 2. So, here independent loops is 2 and meshes loop number of meshes is also 2. So, in most of the cases this formula and the mesh formula number of meshes will be same in most of the cases. Okay, so, next in the nodal analysis we have seen the steps to solve the 
nodal analysis okay in this also there is some procedure to follow the to to solve the mesh analysis problems so what are the procedure we will see step by step in nodal analysis first step was to identify the nodes in this one we will identify the number of meshes so the procedure is the first step in the procedure is identify number of mesh and name it and give the direction of current so either the direction of current may be clockwise or anti clockwise okay so it is anti clockwise or clockwise so we have to give the direction for the current in the circuit after identifying the meshes in the circuit then our second step is to okay, i'll change the color of the pen second step is to write the kvl equation what was the nodal analysis about it was the combination of kirchhoff's current law and ohm's law in this case we will be it is nothing but the combination of kirchhoff's voltage law and ohm's law because we will be moving around the mesh okay then after uh, writing the kvl equation we will solve these equations solve these equations okay so solve the equations and find the currents in the circuit diagram so nothing but and find mesh currents okay so these are the three steps write the kvl equation for each mesh if there are three mesh then we have to write three equations so this is the procedure for writing the mesh analysis now similarly we will take the cases as we have taken in the nodal analysis case 1 case 2 and case 3 in this case also we will be using three cases to understand the procedure okay so first we will take the circuit diagram and we will see the different cases okay this is the case 1 we have got the circuit diagram so a voltage source is connected here and here then we have got four resistors so our first step in the procedure is to identify the meshes so this is mesh 1 this is mesh 2 and this is mesh 3 after uh, assigning the numbers for the mesh then we will uh, give the direction for the flow of current you can take either clockwise or anti clockwise so for this first mesh i'll take in this direction and i'll name this current as i 1 so next for this second mesh i'll take the direction of current in this way and the current flowing in this mesh i'll name it as i2 and in the third mesh i will take the direction of current in this way this in the clockwise way and i'll name this as current i3 so now after this first this first step is over okay coming to the second step we have to ident, uh, we have to write the kvl equation for each of the meshes so first the first one okay so for the first loop loop 1 we will apply the kvl equation now the current is flowing in this direction okay so the current will here current i1 is flowing and from in this from this mesh in the same branch we have got current i2 so now if you observe the direction of current i1 and current i2 they are in the same direction so it will be i1 plus i2 and the current will enter in the positive and leave in the negative terminal of the passive element okay so we will write that one it is plus 7 volts then minus 1 into i1 plus i2 okay then we have got this one minus 5 volt and again in this coming to this one we have the direction of i1 in this way and the direction of current i3 is in this way we have got opposite resistors okay so this is 2 ohms okay we have got opposite resistors sorry opposite direction of the current flowing so what we have to do is in whichever mesh we are writing the equation we should assume that i1 is at 
I1 has got the greater value compared to the value of I3. So it will be I1 minus I3. So there will be a confusion whether you have to write I1 minus I3 or I3 minus I1. Okay. So if you are writing the equation for the mesh one, then you have to assume that the current I1 is at the greater value. So in that uh, nodal analysis also we have did the same thing. So which for whichever node we were writing, we assume that it is at the higher potential. So assuming I1 at higher potential, we will write minus. So the, it will become plus and this will become minus. So this is minus 2 I1 minus I3 equal to 0. Okay. Then simplify this equation using the Kramer's, uh, then apply the Kramer's rules after writing three equations. Okay. So this is nothing, but simplification will be done later when we will take the problems, we will do the simplification. So once the equations are correct, then we can easily solve the problem. Now coming to the loop 2, okay, we will write the KVL for loop 2. Now similarly, this same direction is flowing I2 and I1. So, we will write minus 1 into minus 1 into I2 plus I1. Then here also, okay, so from here I3 is flowing in the direction of current I2 is also same. So, this is plus and this is minus. Okay. So, it will be I2 plus I3 minus 3 into I2 plus I3. Again coming here there is no uh, uh, second current only one current is flowing in this mesh. So, it is minus 2 I2 equal to 0 and this is equation number 2. Now coming to this loop uh, sorry mesh number 3. Okay, we will apply KVL for loop 3. So, what we have again this is the in this the current I3 is flowing here and current I1 is flowing in the opposite direction. Because we are writing the equation for mesh 3, we will assume I3 is at greater value compared to the value of I2. Okay, so, then in that case it will be minus 2. So, now the direction of this polarity will be changed. So, this will become plus and this will become minus. So, minus 2 into I3 minus I1 Okay, then we have got plus 5 and direction of the I2 and I3 are same. So, minus 3 of it will be the summation of I3 plus I2. Okay, then we have got here it will be plus and this is minus only one mesh current we have got. So, it is minus I3 equal to 0. So, this is equation number 3. We have got all the 3 equations. We will apply the Kramer's rule. We will simplify for I1, I2 and I3. Okay. So, using Kramer's rule, we can find the direct, uh, values for the current I1, I2 and I3. So, this is the case 1. Now, we will take up the case 2. Okay. Okay. Coming to the case 2. So, we have got, uh, I, have I have replaced this voltage source with current source. So, in case 2, if, a, if you get an ideal current source, whether it is dependent or independent, same in the case with the nodal analysis. If you get the current, ideal current source outside the branches of the circuit, okay, it should not be inside, it should be outside. So, whenever you get the branches in this like this ideal source, then the amount of current flowing in that mesh will be same. So, this was I1. So, in this branch, 7 ampere of current will be flowing. Okay. So, you do not have to write the KVL equation for this mesh 1. So, this equation, whole of the equation will get replaced with I1 is equal to I1 is equal to 7 amperes. Okay. So, these two equations will be same as it is wherever you have got the uh, I1 notation replace that with 7 ampere. So, in this case also replace the I1 with 7 amperes. So, there will be two equations and two unknowns. So, you can easily solve the this equation using the elimination method and find the value of I2 and I3. Okay, so, this is the case number 2. We will move on to the next case, case number 3. Okay, coming to the case number 3, we have got 7 volts. It is same circuit. What I will do is I will replace this whole branch with a ideal current source say 5 ampere. Okay. 
So now this ideal current source in case 2 was at the outer perimeter of this circuit ok. Now this ideal voltage uh, ideal current source has come inside the circuit ok. It is in between the mesh this in this in between mesh 1 and mesh 3 ok. Now what you will do whenever such ideal current source comes whether it is dependent or independent in between two of the meshes then this we will call it as super mesh. Okay, so, this concept is called as super mesh concept. Okay. Now, to write the equation for the super mesh, in that case we had taken super node and this is super mesh. For that, we have in nodal analysis we had written two nodes equation simultaneously. In this case, we will write the equation of the mesh 1 and mesh 3 simultaneously. So, for that we will erase this ok. So, we will erase this one ok. This is super mesh concept before that before that before erasing ok if it was 5 ampere ok. Now, we will write the equation this is current I 3 direction of current I 3 and this is the direction of current I 1. Now, for that we have to get I will write I 1 minus I 3 is equal to 5 ampere. Why? I could have written even I 3 minus I 1, but I have written I 1 minus I 3. That is because in both the meshes, whichever current is in sync with this current 5 ampere direction. So, this direction is like this and the current direction of I 1 is also same. So, we will assume that I 1 is at greater value and I 3 is in the opposite direction. Okay, So, we will consider this in the lower value and this will be our equation number 1. So, now we will erase this one, we will write both mesh 1 and mesh 3 current simultaneously. So, this was 1 ohm and this is current I 1, this is current I 3 and this is current I 2. Okay? So, together writing it together, write equations of mesh 1 and mesh 3 simultaneously. Okay, so, we will write these equations simultaneously. Now, uh, going in the uh, direction of current I 1, we have got plus 7 volts, then direction of I 1 and I 2 is same. So, minus 1 of I 1 plus I 2 then moving in that direction we have got same value for I 2 and I 3. Then for this current it is flowing in this direction. So, it is minus I 3 equal to 0 minus 1 into I 3 equal to 0. This is our equation number 2. Now, both the meshes equation is written simultaneously. So, for loop 2 the equation will be same as previous one same as previous one. Okay. So, to sum up this one in this if the direction of the current source ideal current show current source is if it is in the same direction in if any in in any of the meshes then we will assume that mesh current to be at the higher value. Okay. So, in this case I 1 is in the same direction as with the ideal source. So, we will take I 1 at higher potential sorry higher value than the I 3. Okay. Then second concept is second conclusion for this is you have to write the equation of the two measures simultaneously. Okay. So, this is the three cases and in the next lecture we will see the problems based on the mesh and nodal. We will analyze whether to apply nodal analysis or to apply the mesh analysis. Okay. So, it will be the concepts will be clear later on. So, whichever is easier method we will apply that. Okay. Thank you.